Hey, hi, hello there. It's Alicia, and I have a microphone on today, which makes me feel very fancy. Um, so, it's been a minute. My hair is a whole different color now. It's uh, blue instead of brown, although it's still, you know, pretty dark. And uh, I put up some videos about how I managed to create this mess. But um, what I wanted to do today is just show you a couple of new things that I got at Ulta that I haven't really seen online yet. And I was interested, thought you might be too. So I'm going to do some swatches, show you what I got. And then um, I also have a couple of things from Cleona Cosmetics. I have some items from the Stained Glass collection and a few single shadows from some of their other collections. So I want to show you those as well. I'll do some swatches and then I'll take them off, put on some more, and we'll live our best life. So. I have a few items just out here on top and I haven't really opened them yet. I did look at this. So uh, starting out is the Frida Kahlo by Ulta Beauty, Beso de Sol Blush and Bronzer. So here's this guy and it's a duo that has a blush and a bronzer inside, as you might expect. And they're kind of uh, darker than I thought they might be. And I've got to get off this film. Okay, so here are the blush and bronzer. And I haven't swatched them yet. So let's do that right quick and we'll get, oh, it does feel very soft. Here are the little swatches on my finger and then we'll get them on my hand here. So they feel very smooth. And you can kind of see the blush has a bit of a sheen, whereas the bronzer looks pretty matte. So I feel like that's a, a good combination. It doesn't look overly pigmented to the point where it would be difficult to sort of buff that out on the skin. So could be good. Um, obviously, in terms of size of the pan, it might be a little tricky, depending on the size brush you use for your blush or your bronzer to get it sort of buffed all over the face, but they do feel very nice at the very least. Um, not for use in the eye area. And the first ingredient in these is talc, followed by mica, and they both have some dimethicone in there, which probably accounts for the smoothness. Um, but they both look very nice and wearable. Uh, my skin tone, I'm still struggling to figure out what it really is. Um, and I keep getting confused by thinking, okay, I'm not fair, but I'm light. So then I buy a light product and then it's too dark and I'm like, okay, well, am I fair? Because I'm not completely super pale. So I'm not sure. I do believe there are two colors uh, for this blush and bronzer duo. I could be wrong about that. Um, hmm. Yeah, so this one is Beso de Sol, and if there's another one, I'll, I'll put that up. But this is the one I picked. The packaging is cute. I did uh, Google Frida. Um, all I really knew about her was what she looked like. And I read a little bit about her on Wikipedia, and I checked out some of the different styles of art that she did. And she did a lot of self-portraits, which were interesting, disturbing. Um, it's not necessarily my aesthetic, even when I look at art that I think is like a little bit creepy that I really like, like um, Salvador Dali. It, it didn't, her art didn't really resonate with me, like some other painters, sculptors, artists do. Um, but I think she was pretty famous in Mexico for her, her artistic style and um, was a pretty successful female artist, which is pretty dope. So this is the other thing I bought from her collection at Ulta, and I haven't opened this yet, but this is the Signature Collector's Box. I wanted the eyeshadow palette, which is inside here, and you had to buy the whole big thing. I couldn't just buy the palette by itself. So inside there's an eyeshadow palette with 12 shades and also a basically a color switch. So here's the inside of the box. It's got her dates of life. It looks like she 
lived from 1907 to 1954, and you're going to get some different information about her in here, at least the information they want you to have. And then um, the packaging looks like, what are those? They look like poppies, but I don't think they're poppies. Perhaps they're a flower found in Mexico. We're not really sure, but um, I'm going to pull out the color switch, which is in a tin, and then this is a cardboard packaging for the eyeshadow palette. Let's see if I can get them out. Okay, so the box I guess you can use for putting in whatever you want. It kind of looks like a cigar box to me. Uh, it says never apologize for who you are over here on the, on the side. I think that's a cute message. Unless who you are is a dick, then you should apologize for it. Um, but hopefully people buying this makeup will not be dicks. So here's the color switch. It's got a spongy part in the middle and then the uh, signature Brillo pad looking sponge like you put in for a bun mold. Um, so that's great. I actually do use my color switch and uh, this inside part is removable apparently which is good because then you can wash the two pieces separately. And it's in a nice tin. It's cute. Um, my other color switch is in a tin. For me that's that's perfect. I, I like the packaging. It's very cute and I would like to have two of them. So on the other side, and I believe this was somewhere around $30. The other side, so I'm ripping it out. This is, this is all you get for the packaging. So it's not particularly wasteful going inside of that box if you're going to use the box. So this is the outside of the eyeshadow palette. Again, 12 colors. And inside you have a smaller mirror that says never apologize for who you are beneath it. And I'm just going to remove the film and then I'll show you the colors which look very nice. So just on first glance this looks like something that I, I would really want regardless of who the collaboration was with. Um, and of course it's not a collaboration with Frida necessarily but her brand or her foundation or whoever manages her assets now that she's passed away. So in here, these are the colors. I think they look really pretty. Um, it reminds me a little bit of maybe like a Juvia's Place type of palette, um, just in terms of the color saturation that I see just looking here. They're pretty rich um, mattes. And then the shimmers, there are four. It's one, two, three, four shimmers. Did you check that out? One, two, three, four. And they are in more of jewel tones. The lightest shimmer I think is going to be this one in Muse. So let's, uh, let's swatch them and see what the pigmentation is like for these. But just on first glance, they look nice. I've never actually tried Ulta's eyeshadow formula before, so we'll see. We'll see what we're working with here. But at least the color story, I think, is nice and rich, and um, does not seem out of place with Frida's art that I looked at. Okay, so just on the first three that I swatched here, that these top three, the bronzer and blush powders that I swatched first. Those felt much softer. Um, that doesn't necessarily say anything about how these will perform on the eyes, but just to note, the other powders were way softer. Okay, in terms of just swatching these three, now the one on my pointer finger is meant to be right here, but that is very close in the color uh, Perla or Perla. That one is very close to my skin tone. So for me, that would be the kind of shade that I would, you know, set my primer with or use right underneath my brow bone. And it does look like the mattes have a tiny bit of sheen to them. Not, not anything that would be like shiny, but just it suggests to me that they might blend out nicely. So here are the top three. Um, you've got Sol, Muse, and Perla. Sol, Muse, Perla. Uh, and then I'm going to wipe my fingers and give you the next three, which are going to be Dahlia in the pink, Lava in the brown, it's like a mid-tone brown, and Adobe in the nice Adobe brick color here. So Dahlia, Lava, Adobe, Dahlia, Lava, Adobe. 
and let's try not to go over Perla. So you can see this immediately put down like the fingerprint, which this brown one did not do so much. And what that suggests from a swatch perspective is just, you know, if you put down, if you're trying to pack on the color, a lot of it might get in one place. So there's the next three. The pigmentation seems good. I mean, it, it looks like something I could definitely work with to make an eyeshadow look. Okay, next three are going to be Amor, Agave, and Magic. Amor is this warm brown. Agave feels, again, more dry, which may be, again, because it's perhaps more pigmented, perhaps. And then uh, this purpley color is Magic. So Amor, Agave, and Magic are these three. Oh, there's Magic, Agave, and Amor. So there are those three. So this shimmer does look very nice and foiled. Uh, this one is a little bit more subtle, maybe. I'm trying to just mess with the lighting so you can see. Okay, maybe I'll do the other three down here. Uh, the last three are going to be the uh, charcoal -y black color. It doesn't look true true black, um, but it looks it looks like workable eyeshadow black if you use your blacks to deepen um, the outer corner. Uh, that one's called Infinity. The dark blue shimmer is called Karma. And then the last, I don't know, rose copper. Oh, it looks really beautiful. This rose copper is called Mystical. It kind of looks like a rose and copper duochrome, sort of rose gold, but maybe a little bit warmer. This um, shimmer is called Karma, and then this black, again, still, it's, it's, uh, it's maybe like a little, like a couple steps down from the blackest black I've ever seen. It's called Infinity. So there's Infinity. And uh, I'm sure it looks dark compared to the others, but it is more like charcoal-y as opposed to the blackest black. This dark blue is Karma, and that has a nice sheen to it, giving that jewel-toned blue. I'm gonna see if you can capture that. It looks kind of blurry. Um, and then this one might be my very favorite. This is Mystical. And Mystical, oh yes, like check that out. Just compared to the creaminess, of this dark blue. This one felt drier. This one is very much more, it's more thick, it's more emollient, it's got much better color payoff as well, and is gorgeous. So looking at this whole color story together, I think I could make a few really nice looks with that. It is definitely, for me, calling out to be more fall colors, but I, I think it's pretty. Um, it's definitely not a chalky, um, matte formula. It's not the smoothest mattes I've ever felt by a long stretch, but they, they do feel like they will be workable on the eyes. And um, I'll probably post on Instagram, you know, when I do some eyeshadow looks with it. My favorite is absolutely that color Mystical, um, followed by that shimmer in Muse, which was this, this beautiful top guy. And then I think the mattes that are in here will actually complement each other and the shimmers quite well. Um, I think for this dark blue and maybe the purple, you're looking at mixing them with the other jewel tones or perhaps using this mid-tone brown in the black. Um, primarily, I for somebody with my light slash fair or fair to light skin tone, I think the range of colors in here is nice. If you have darker skin, it looks like many of them would be mid-tone colors, which perhaps you're used to having that. But again, just check them out all together. You can sort of see a bit more of the reflectivity of the mattes, or excuse me, of the shimmers now that I've sort of stuck my finger in there. And you can see this one's less punchy, but this one's nice and punchy and this one is too. So I actually really like those. I think it would be a beautiful fall themed palette. And I really, I really like the color story of it. So I feel like it's not so scattered and just 
boring and predictable. I feel like it's very jewel toned, very fall, very warm. And I can definitely appreciate the way that they did some of the naming for the colors because this to me, this color in soul, which means sun, that to me seems like a nice deep dandelion yellow that you would use if you were painting the sun. I like the adobe, the amor, um, the dahlia even was kind of a nice, it's not quite um, baby bubblegum pink, but it's more of a mauve shifted pink that's still quite pale. And I, yeah, I really like it. So that's that. And I really haven't seen anybody else on YouTube feature it just to show what the swatches look like. But I, I feel like it stood out to me and it's pretty rare for me to think this is the first time ever that I've looked at an Ulta palette and said, oh, that seems like a well-crafted color story. And I'm willing to try your formula that I'm not familiar with in the, um, pursuit of checking out this color story. Okay, so now there are, I'll, I'll just show you this real quick. So this is the Damn Girl um, new mascara from Too Faced. I just got the sample size, or did I? I feel like I got a sample size, but perhaps this is the full size. Um, I'm not gonna open it and try it yet just because I have other mascaras, but like, look at this marketing picture of this girl's eyelashes, like, all right, it just kind of seems like a fat version of the um, Better Than Sex wand. So we'll see about that. I don't love the Better Than Sex mascara formula because it transfers on me. It transfers and flakes a little bit, so. Okay, this was the other thing that I was really excited to show, which are the two new palettes by Smith & Cult. I have a one product from Smith & Cult. It's a pressed glitter, and compared to my Dear Kitty Brown, Lemonhead Los Angeles, and even the ColourPop pressed glitter formula, it's trash. It's not good, don't recommend it, it sucks. Get literally anything else for way lower price tag. The Dear Kitty Brown ones, the ColourPop ones are $5 a piece, get those. The um, Smith & Cult glitter was $22 and it was 22 trash. It was garbage, I, didn't, I don't like it. But I did want to try these two eyeshadow palettes because they actually looked really nice to me. I think this packaging is nice and sleek and I've got one in the, in the color story Dusk Blaze and the other in Lilac Flash. And again, because I didn't see anyone on YouTube really talking about them, I thought I would buy them, show you what they look like, and you can get an idea of what's going on and whether you might want to spend some coin on it. These are nice and petite, compact. There are nine colors inside. And it does say on top, or on this packaging here, multi-dimensional eyeshadow and glitter shift highlight and super pigmented shades. Use shift shade alone or on top of other shadows to create endless transformations. They're not going to be endless, but I understand your marketing here. So here's the outside packaging here. Very sleek, it's cardboard, and there's a mirror inside. And these are your colors. So this one is in Dusk Blaze. And part of what was really, I'll put up the picture of what this looked like on the website, like right here. So you can sort of compare the two. But this was just so bright to me. And I feel like you can make the judgment on the screen, but I feel like the marketing photos of this on the website looked brighter and a little bit more diversified than this is, but perhaps I'm just misremembering. Um, just looking at this, we've got three shimmers. So you've got this guy here is a shimmer, this uh, warm reddish guy, and then this is the shifter shade. So all the others are mattes, so that gives us six mattes, three shimmers. That's a pretty great balance for um, a palette. This could be a really lovely everyday palette for people who don't, you know, do the most like I do. Or if I were to go to a conference, although let's face it, last time I went to a conference, I put glitter on my face. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and swatch these and see what the mattes feel like. The pans are kind of small, but... And there are no names on uh, the individual colors, but here are the top three, um, top three here. And we'll just shoop, get them right there. Ooh, that's promising. And it didn't leave a ton on my fingers. 
in terms of where I swatch. You know how sometimes it sort of stains your fingers when you do your swatches? All right, the next three are going to be our second shimmer and our next two mattes. As I'm just like, you know, jamming my finger in there, there is a little bit of kick up in the pans. It's really not bothersome to me, but if you're the kind of person who believes it should be non-existent, you might dislike that. Okay, so there are the next three. I don't know that that shimmer impresses me even as much, or even this one, as much as the Frida Kahlo, Kalo, uh, I'm sure it's Kahlo, but it, these shimmers don't really impress me as much as the Ultibrain ones did, but perhaps you feel different again. It's, it's just a difference between having something that's pretty and shimmery versus metallic and, and punchy. I prefer metallic and punchy, but I'm not, I'm not saying these are bad. I just, I would prefer them to be a little poppier, especially because the reflect in the pan, especially on this guy looks pretty nice. Um, that more rusty color doesn't look quite so punchy. So again, perhaps this is a really nice everyday palette if the mattes blend well. So then we've got this sort of grazy taupe color, a nice chocolate brown that's actually a little bit cool. And then our shifter, which feels drier. And the reflect is really beautiful, um, but it's not, it's not quite as loose of a formula. So there are those three. And I'll just pull these down a little bit. We'll give you the shifter here. And then, oh, interesting. It's very subtle, in my opinion. So here's the entire set swatched. This looks very neutral to me. And again, I don't know if I'm just misremembering it. You know what, I've got my cell phone right here. So let me just check before I talk out of my butt and look at the other one as well. I don't recall whether I saw swatches of this online, but I'll just pull up the Ulta website. So see, even this shifter, while it looks really bright in the pan with that white base, I'm just pulling up my Ulta um, app, it's not as impressive here. So I think that's one of the things that really sold me on how nice this palette looked to me. But in the swatch, this, this would be a nice palette if you were going to work. Again, provided that the colors blend nicely on the eye but it's way more neutral than I, I sort of had been expecting it to be. And let's just look and see. Mm -hmm. All right, so Smith and Colt. Yeah, this, uh, the picture I think perhaps made that pink look a little bit more pinky instead of the dusty sort of color I'm getting here. Um, this one looked perhaps a little bit warmer to me. And then this looked a little bit more purplish while this looked more brown and a little bit less cool than it looks here. So I would say that this, at least in my impression, does not look as good in person as it does online, which is uh, disappointing and kind of sucky. But let's look at the other one and see whether that one looks better. The other color story is called Lilac Flash. And also in here, the colors look quite bright and vibrant online. So let's compare and see what she looks like wherever I have put her. Oh, here we go. So this is the one with the more white packaging. So this is Lilac Flash. I will wipe this guy off. I had these horrible nightmares last night about my entire family just not liking me. And in my dream, I was feeling really, really desperate for my family to just acknowledge me and they just wouldn't. I was heartbroken in my dream. So again, same outer packaging here for uh, Lilac Flash. And, oh, well, crap. So here it is, and you can see that it's kind of a mess in there. Um, let me see if I can just 
mash that down with my finger a little bit because I don't want it to fall out as I hold this up for you. It does feel like it's going back down, but I have a, um, this is the bottom middle shade right there. Might as well sort of swatch that as long as I've got it all over my finger. And she look like that. That's quite nice. I'm already more impressed with that even though it was more lightly or loosely pressed in the pan. Um, and then the other one that looks like it's sort of coming out is the top center purpley guy. So I'm just going to jam that down in there as well. So I don't want to, I don't want to lose it. So there's that top color and then I'll wipe off the mirror and show you the inside. And that's what that guy looks like. So already I'm more impressed with this one, even though, you know, it's falling out. So let's wipe off the mirror and then I'll show you what the palette looks like. And I'll also put the photo up of what this looks like on the Ulta website so you can see. I feel like this is a bit more of a better color representation. I'm going to hold it up at a little bit of an angle just so I don't, you know, tempt it to fall out. So this one is obviously more berry and purple toned. Um, this one is not a true red. It's more of a brick and brown. It looks a little bit more red in the in the viewer than it does here. So I'll I'll swatch them all for you and then you can sort of make your call at least against my skin tone and see. But those are the two that were falling out that are right here. Um, this one has four shim five shimmers, three mattes, and then the topper. So our shimmers are going to be one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and then your topper right here. And then the three mats are gonna be meh, meh, meh. Okay, so yeah, let's uh let's look and see. Um this looks better to me, but still I I just feel like it doesn't translate as well as it did online. So I'll just finish off with this middle shimmer so that these three in the center can kind of be the center down row. There you go. Kind of messed that up a little bit, but already these seem to be swatching better for the shimmers than the last palette. Um, and that might be just a color preference, but the finish on this does seem more shiny, in my opinion, which is nice. Okay, so then let me give you shimmer matte matte. Again, on my skin tone, this could be a good all over like brow bone type shade. Um, or, you know, setting the eyeshadow in the first place. Here are those three. Again, no names. But look how much better these shimmers look compared to the last one. Sorry the light is uh, sort of fading for us, but I think you'll still be able to see a pretty true to color, you know, without things being washed out by lights. Sometimes I feel like that can be misleading. Oh, see, this is already way better. Now, uh, this middle guy is also quite, you know, is quite light. Um, if you have a darker skin tone, I don't know how you would use that as it's a matte. Um, but maybe, maybe you have a thought in your head about where you want to put it. Okay, and then the last three I'm going to swatch are going to be that deep purple shimmer, which uh, looks far less metallic. Um, the brickish, you know, basically it's a, a very warm... Uh, brown that tricked me because in the photos online I thought it looked red and in reality it, it's more brownie so let me let me show you because even there it kind of looks a little red and just in my perception of it it, it does not look red it looks um, like a very warm a warm brown in person so again, um, this is going to be our purpley shimmer guy. See if I'm doing a good job for you. That more like bricky brown. And then here's the shifter color for this one, which in the last uh, palette, it was like a, a yellowy color. Um, and this one is a dual. It's basically um, a transparent base with a pink sparkle. And in the last one, it was a transparent base with a more yellowy sparkle. 
So these ones to me look better overall, but still don't really seem to match the pictures I saw online that made me think like, oh, these look gorgeous. Why aren't they all over the place? Um, uh, favorite color, this guy. It's, it's again, a thicker formula. This one's very pretty. I'm not sure how these guys are gonna work together. That's supposed to be a shimmer, but perhaps it's just more of a satin matte. I mean, it's got, it's got some reflectivity there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty. I don't know what the variety of looks you're going to get with this one is. Um, but let me just hold the two of them up next to each other again so you can see them. And hopefully after having seen the swatches and just hearing that I feel like they're more muted than they appear online might be useful for you. And I will perhaps do some swatches and take them out in natural light and either insert the pictures or stick those up on my Instagram. But uh, this one was Dusk Blaze here. I, I don't know that I feel like Blaze is an appropriate, or even Dusk, appropriate words to describe what these palettes are evoking for me at least. Um, they, they're not bad. They just looked better in my, in my personal opinion online. So hopefully there you can see the shift um, of this bottom one in lilac that's more of a pinkish and in the top one you've got more of that like yellowish green situation. I don't think they're bad but they're they're just more muted than I thought they would be and if that's your cup of tea then you might really like them because if you were sort of scared away by them looking a little bit punchy online I just really don't think they are. Um, this one kind of reminds me of the Huda amethyst palette. This reminds me of nothing except for neutrals, a little bit of green. Um, but yeah, I feel like I would like to use them and see where I get and maybe the saving grace for them both will be that duochrome shift color because maybe that's what they both need to just elevate and pop a little bit more. So that's that for what I got from Ulta. But I also did want to swatch for you guys the shades that I got from Cleona Cosmetics. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the stained glass collection if you've followed their page on Instagram. I did not buy a butt ton because it's expensive. But I did purchase um, seven shades from the stained glass collection. And I also got um, maybe one, two, three, four, five, five new mattes from both the Sub Zero and the 66 degrees, 66.5 degrees north collection, and a few shimmers as well. Let me check and see. That one is ColourPop. That one is Makeup Geek. So yes, it looks like seven. Um, circular pans from their previous collections and seven from the new collection. So I'm just going to point them out. So these are the stained glass collection and then these uh, two rows right here and this green are from the their existing lines. Um, these three greens and these purples I wore two days ago together I used all the greens as mattes on my upper lid and then I used the purples on my lower lash line. So nice, so so nice. And I've been following Cleona for a while. I think I was introduced to the brand by Angeshka and I just very, very pleased. The packaging was hard to get into. Like they really bubble wrap the crap out of them. Um, and none of them came damaged, so that's that's pretty cool. So let me swatch for you the, we'll do the boring ones first and then we'll do stained glass. And by boring, I just mean not stained glass because for me, they're not boring. I'll give you the three greens. They are so nice. In contrast to the previous palettes that I swatched in this video, these are beautiful. They're very soft, they're very smooth. They blended perfectly for my use. Um, I wore them with, I typically will use like um, a, like a concealer instead of a regular eyeshadow primer. Um, but even though the, like, you know, this is just my bare arm, so there's no, um, there's no base here, but these did 
pop nicely and I'll maybe put a picture up if I remember to take one so you can see what the look looked like. And then I'm going to give you these two purples, which are both matte. Love them both. And then I'll grab, I'll actually grab both of the shimmers in there too. Oops, I just got blue on my, or purple on my blue. We'll swatch it anyway. <laughs> okay. The matte purple, another matte purple, and then this guy, and then I'll go over top of that one. That one, I believe, is a duochrome. Oh, you can see the streak of purple in there, maybe. But they're really, really pretty. Really pretty um, on the eyes. And I didn't have any problem with blending, building. I was able to pack... I think it was this green deeper into my crease. This one was sort of my blend out, and then this one is was in between. And they looked really nice together. And then, uh, so those are all the regular ones, right? That's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and then I've also got the stained glass ones to show you. So let me shrink these off, and we'll show you those, and then I'll say goodbye for today. So... Okay, so the stained glass collection has this really nice, I mean, you can see that I've swatched these, but it's got the Cleona um, stamp in there and they are square pans, or I guess, excuse me, they're rectangular pans. And according to uh, the girls at Cleona, they're meant to look like stained glass um, with all of the different pieces next to each other because you can see sort of is that beveled, is that the right word? Um, for the edges there but you know I don't really care I actually do like the square pans because they fit so nicely together in this palette in my magnetic palettes and it seems like there's just a little bit less wasted space honestly than the circular pans uh, so yeah I'm here for it so this one is in tracery and on the back of these which is really nice it says face eyes lips so it tells you where they're approved to use so here's tracery. I'm just uh, mashing it in there. Tracery. Ooh, baby. So pretty. Wipe my finger and give you the next one, which will go with this dark purple. This guy is going to be stencil. Here's what stencil looks like. Super lovely. Stencil. I want to rub them in just so you can see the sheen and the shift. So, tracery, stencil. How freaking pretty is that? It's super pretty. All right, next we'll go with this freaking glitter bomb in the color Corrosion. Corrosion look like this. And I feel like, for me, it looks more um, yellowy and green. But let's see if we can get it on the uh, curves of my hand. Here's Corrosion. This one is more chunky. I think it probably has a different formula. They had three or four different formulas that came out. So here's corrosion. Yeah, it's definitely more chunky. But when you blend it in, ooh mama. So nice. I could do this all day. When I got these, I just took a huge fluffy brush in, um, one of the other colors, I think it's glow, and I just put it all over my body. I brought my highlight up here. I used it as a highlight, and I brought it up on my forehead. I just wanted it everywhere. So freaking gorgeous. Okay, so next I'll give you this little guy. Her name is Chandelier. She looks like this. And you can see I'm just, you know, wearing out the imprint on there. 
This is chandelier. Ooh, this is chandelier. Hello, mama. I hadn't done this yet. I hadn't swatched them all. Like I used them on my eyes and my face, but oh boy, that's chandelier. Oh wow, look at that. It's catching a lot more of the duochromatic when I give you that shift away from the camera. I'm primarily in natural lighting, but I just have a little a little lamp here. That's you know the reason I'm casting shadow. Oh, freaking yes, mama. I like it. All right, next let me give you, here's Ambient. Ambient all by her little self. All right. This one has a more smooth texture compared to those chunkier guys. This one reminds me of Kaleidoscope from Makeup Geek or Sugar Rush. It reminds me of kind of both of those. Yeah, this one's uh, way more smooth shimmer like the first two. So there is, what did I say it was called? I don't even remember. Ambient or ambient. Let's uh, see. Ooh, ooh. Let's uh, get her there. Ooh, yeah, you can get that like greeny shift. You can check out the shifts and all the other guys. Ooh, doesn't corrosion just stand out? It's like punching you in the face with happy glitter. Okay, I'm gonna give you two more because those are the only other two I have. This is Ripple. It's really pretty sea foamy dude. Ripple. Ooh. That feels so good. And I put that on with those greens. And then I popped like a purpley one in the center. I was a happy freaking camper. Let's just lay this down. All right. So here's that ripple. Hello, ripple. Okay, and then my makeup wipe is starting to get very exhausted from its life, it needs a break. And last but not least, glow. This is the one I just dumped all over my body and I was very pleased about it, so no regrets. Here's glow. Oh, you can just see that like kind of chunkiness and then when you buff it in, it's just like magic. So let me just put it yeah, let me just get it all over here so you can see what I did. That's glow. It's so, it's just completely clear until it catches the light and then it gives you that gorgeous, wet looking iridescence. It doesn't look chunky, but it just looks like starlight. So beautiful. I'll, um, I'll put it next to the others just so you can see for comparison with all of them. But I wanted to show you kind of over a larger area. So we'll just switch that. Like, oh, high glow. Oh my. Now these swatches might not be anything new to you because the um, girls at Cleona obviously swatch everything on their Instagram, but if you don't follow them, I don't know that I could give you a better recommendation for their brand than just showing you these swatches. So nice. Like, look at those happy little shifties with the green in here. It's cool. Got the yellow here and what was that? Ambient. I just, I am obsessed with how happy, 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 happy leaves look. They just look like bright loveliness. So that's, a, that's it. I'm probably going to just like hang up this video and 
stare at my arm. One of my favorite things to do when I do swatches like this, I'll just show you because I'm, I'm nuts. I'll take it and I'll just rub it in like this. And then I'll take this hand and just rub it on that one and then I'll do it on the other hand. And I just, like, I just want to be looking like a Cullen. And it just, it just makes me really happy to be glittery. And then I pet the cat and then Matt's like, oh no, the cat's going to lick it all off. I don't know if it's safe. And I'm like, all right, well then I guess I can't pet the cat because I'm not giving up my glitter hands. So I don't know what to tell you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful because like I said, I hadn't really seen a whole lot on YouTube about the Smith & Cult palettes or the Ulta and Freely Kalo foundation or whatever. So uh, yeah, hopefully that was useful in some way. Let me know if you have any questions about them. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, which is Alicia Reve, but with three L's. So it's A-L-L-L-Y-C-I-A-R-I-V-E-T on Instagram. I'll show you when I use these different products and then you can sort of get an idea of what they look like in action. Especially, you know, I could I could do something very neutral with that one Smith and Cult palette. And I'd like to see if I can punch it up, especially with that shifter color. So, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out today. Hope you're having a swell day. I've been Alicia. You have been fan-fantastic. And I hope to see you the next time I turn on the camera. Bye-bye.